All right, hey you guys, instead of being in a classroom, you get to be in Miss Overkite's kitchen. So uh, we're doing quarantine science. Um, so this video is gonna kick off the whole phenomenon called equilibrium. So, so far when you've seen reactions, you, you see them drawn where it's reactant, and then you have an arrow, and 100% of it gets converted to product. Um, and this is with what we're gonna do now, um, we're going to study something called equilibrium. And equilibrium is basically saying that, you know, you have a reaction where the amount of product and reactant isn't changing, but um, there are sometimes certain things that can push an equilibrium. So I don't know how many of you guys ever had toys when you were growing up where like maybe it was a Hot Wheels car if you were, um, and if you played with cars and the color would change if you dipped it in hot or cold water, or maybe you had a different type of toy that had color change based on if it was with hot or cold water. You may have never thought about it, but it actually is a reaction. So let's take this car we found around the house, and this is a color changing Lightning McQueen car. Now, if you have it in cold water, Lightning McQueen is red. And then you may have had toys when you were young where if you then put them in a different temperature water, Lightning McQueen turned yellow. And you probably never gave it any thought, but really what that is, is that's an equilibrium reaction where you have some sort of reactant or some sort of version of the reaction where the substance is red and another part of the reaction that is yellow. And what you're gonna learn uh, throughout this week is there are certain conditions that can push a reaction. So in this case, hot environment pushed the reaction to be uh, towards the, I guess we'll say, we'll call the yellow the product because it's on this side of the reaction. And then when you put it into a cold environment, it pushed the reaction towards the red substance. So you can shift a reaction, and that's why you see these double arrows, is because reactions can be reversible, they can lie in some sort of equilibrium. And so in the case of toy makers, they manipulate it where this paint actually can be in two different versions. The red version in a cold environment, and then when you put it in a hot environment, it's pushed towards the cold, uh, pushed towards the yellow in the warm environment. So you may wanna take note, you could either pause this, but you may wanna write that in this situation, it's favored to be uh, red when it's cold and yellow when it's warm. So you may wanna jot that down. So the next example, I'm gonna leave, I can get into the, fr the freezer. The next example is, oh, actually, I'll show you the example first. Okay, the next example is something that's a little more chemistry related, where you can actually see what the substance is. So we have two different substances. We have NO2, which is a brown color, and we have N2O4, which is clear. So I'm gonna go get two tubes, and they're in the freezer right now, and I'll show you what version they're in. Okay, so when I get them out of the freezer, they're both almost clearish. And I'm gonna put one in hot water, and I'm gonna put one in ice water. And I don't know how well you can see, this can be zoomed in, but you'll see in these cases, that as they warm up, it turns brown. And this one's doing it much, much slower. But when I brought them out of the freezer, they were both clear. Now what happens is in cold environments, it favors the side of the reaction that's more the clear color. And in a warm environment, it favors the substance that's more of a brown color. So temperature is causing this to shift. And actually, NO2 is smog which is why when, if you've ever heard of ozone action days, or if you've noticed it in the summer, it seems a little bit more smoggy and more polluted. It's because as the air warms up, the equilibrium is shifted more towards this brown color. So what's inside this tube right now actually is smog. So um, you can see this one's a brownish color, but it's not as deep of a brown because it's in a colder environment. So you're gonna have to answer some questions at the end of the week about this, these reactions, but remember, when it's warm, this reaction shifts towards the brown, and when it's cold, this reaction shifts towards the clear, and you're gonna be studying some of the reasons for that this week. That's it.